Hello from America, and a warm welcome back to the Nostalgia Channel. In these past days, we've been saddened by the news of the passing of exceptional talents. Today, our episode is devoted to honoring their memory. Furthermore, we'll pause to reflect on the stars we've recently bid farewell to. Before we continue, we humbly request your support. If this video or the legacies of these extraordinary individuals have left an impression on you, please consider giving it a thumbs up as a gesture of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Steve Harley, the iconic British musician and frontman of the legendary glam rock band Cockney Rebel, has peacefully passed away at the age of 73 surrounded by his beloved family. Following a courageous battle with cancer, which he had been fighting since late last year. Revered for his masterful songwriting prowess and magnetic stage presence, Steve Harley propelled Cockney Rebel to international acclaim with their timeless anthem, Make Me Smile, Come Up and See Me. A song that resonated deeply with audiences across the globe. Born in London in 1951, Steve Harley's early years were defined by a four-year struggle with polio, during which he developed a profound passion for poetry and music. His journey in the music industry began after triumphing in a talent competition on Arthur Godfrey's CBS show, eventually leading to a contract with King Records. Despite the evolving landscape of rock and roll, Steve remained unwaveringly true to his artistic roots drawing inspiration from the lyrical brilliance of icons like Gershwin, Cole Porter, and Irving Berlin. While Cockney Rebel's debut album, The Human Menagerie, marked their arrival in 1973, it was their 1975 release, The Best Years of Our Lives, that catapulted them to superstardom. Make Me Smile, Come Up and See Me, soared to the top of the UK singles chart, becoming Steve Harley's defining masterpiece cherished for its infectious melodi and clever lyrics. Beyond his achievements with Cockney Rebel, Steve Harley made enduring contributions to the music world, including a memorable collaboration with Andrew Lloyd Webber on The Phantom of the Opera. Despite initially being cast as The Phantom, his subsequent replacement did little to diminish his lasting impact on the musical landscape. Steve Harley's legacy transcends music, as he is survived by his loving wife Dorothy, daughters Kerr and Greta, and four cherished grandchildren. In their heartfelt statement, his family acknowledged the profound global impact of his work and expressed the deep sense of loss felt by admirers worldwide. Maria Richwine, the Colombian-born American actress celebrated as the pioneering Latina Playboy Bunny, and for her memorable portrayal of Buddy Holly's wife in the 1978 biopic, The Buddy Holly Story, has passed away at the age of 71. She was found unresponsive in a hot tub in Palm Springs, California. While the circumstances of her passing are not deemed suspicious, Further information awaits a coroner's report. Born Maria Agudelo on June 22, 1952, in Colombia, she immigrated to the United States as a child, where her passion for the stage ignited, inspired by the grandeur of Radio City Music Hall and the performances of Audrey Hepburn. Maria embarked on her entertainment career as a Playboy Bunny, a role she cherished as the most fulfilling of her life. She took pride in clarifying the distinction between bunnies, who were elegant cocktail waitresses, and playmates who posed for the magazine. Maria fondly recalled her father's unwavering support for her career choice, emphasizing the elegance and grace of the bunny costume. Her breakthrough in acting came with her compelling portrayal of Maria Holly in The Buddy Holly Story, earning her acclaim despite critics yearning for more depth in her character's exploration. This marked the onset of a promising acting journey, leading to notable appearances in various television series such as Norman a.k.a. Pablo, Three's Company, Sledgehammer, and Freddy's Nightmares. 
Maria Richwine leaves behind a legacy of shattering barriers and pursuing her dreams with steadfast determination and grace. Her contributions to the entertainment industry, particularly in representing Latina women in roles that were scarce during her time, stand as a testament to her enduring impact. As details unfold regarding her untimely passing, her life and work will continue to be cherished and celebrated by fans and colleagues alike. Michael Culver, a distinguished British actor celebrated for his captivating performances in both film and television, has passed away at the age of 85. Renowned for his portrayal of Captain Nita in The Empire Strikes Back, and his compelling role as a bigoted police inspector in David Lean's A Passage to India, Culver left an unforgettable impression on audiences worldwide. His passing was confirmed by Alliance agents, his representatives for the past decade, although the exact circumstances surrounding his death were not disclosed. Born on June 16, 1938 in North London, Culver's affinity for the stage was evident from a young age, coming from a family deeply rooted in the world of theater. His father, Roland Culver, was a respected stage actor, while his mother, Daphne, played a pivotal role as a casting director, credited with discovering talent like Richard Burton. Culver's passion for acting led him to the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, where he refined his skills before embarking on a distinguished career with the Old Vic Company, gracing both Broadway and the West End with his memorable performances. Over the course of his illustrious career spanning several decades, Culver became a familiar face on British television, appearing in acclaimed series such as The Befrienders, Secret Army, and Cadfell, the latter alongside Derek Jacoby. However, it was his portrayal of Captain Nita in Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, that solidified his status as a cinematic icon, etching his name into the annals of film history. Beyond his on-screen achievements, Culver made notable contributions to the James Bond franchise with uncredited appearances and garnered acclaim for his role in the ITV telefilm, Philby, Burgess and McLean showcasing his versatility as an actor. In his later years, he turned his attention to political activism, championing causes close to his heart, including a successful campaign for a statue honoring Iraq war protester, Brian Haw. Michael Culver's legacy extends far beyond his artistic prowess. His unwavering commitment to activism and his dedication to effecting positive change serve as a testament to his enduring impact. He is survived by his wife, Amanda, children Roderick, Justin, and Susan, and four grandchildren, leaving behind a legacy that celebrates both his remarkable artistic achievements and his profound commitment to social justice. Maria Czwalibog, a revered icon in the Polish theater and film scene, has bid farewell at the age of 91, according to an announcement from the Association of Polish Stage Artists. Her passing signifies the conclusion of a remarkable career that spanned numerous decades, leaving an indelible imprint on Poland's artistic landscape. Hailing from Warsaw, Maria was born into a family of landowners on February 4, 1933, spending her formative years on her parents' estate in Miswał Łuka County. Her journey in the world of acting commenced after her graduation from the State Higher Theater School in 1956. Early on, she showcased her versatility and depth by portraying a diverse array of characters, seamlessly blending classical and contemporary works. Maria's cinematic debut came in the 1956 comedy Nikodem Dimsa, but it was her portrayal of the postwoman Enen in Agnieszka Holland's A Single Woman that truly captured hearts and earned her critical acclaim. This role secured her the prestigious Leading Female Role Award at the 13th Polish Film Festival in Gdynia in 1988. 
Over the course of her illustrious career, Maria graced the stage with her presence in over 70 roles, took part in 34 television theater performances, and left an indelible mark on feature films and TV series alike. Her unforgettable performances in productions such as Mother Joanna of the Angels, Wanted, Wanted, and Carte Blanche showcased her remarkable talent and unwavering commitment to her craft. Maria's contributions to the arts were duly recognized with a plethora of awards and distinctions, including the esteem at Amber Ring, the award of the Chairman of the Radio and Television Committee, and the Silver Medal for Merit to Culture Gloria Artist. In addition to her professional achievements, Maria's personal life was intricately interwoven with the theater. She shared her life with actor Marik Borowski and had previously been married to Andrzej Kopinski. Moreover, her familial connections extended into the industry, with her sister Aleta being married to the iconic actor B.V. Tishkevich. Beyond her theatrical endeavors, Maria epitomized the transformative power of art in shaping and reflecting the human experience. Her passing leaves a void in the Polish cultural landscape, but her legacy of artistic brilliance and profound reverence for the craft of acting will undoubtedly continue to inspire generations of actors and theater enthusiasts, both in Poland and beyond. David Brees Hears, a revered mountaineer, filmmaker, and author, celebrated for his groundbreaking exploration of the awe-inspiring yet perilous domain of Mount Everest, has passed away at the age of 68. He was found unresponsive at his home in Marblehead, Massachusetts, with his business manager Ellen Gobron confirming the news, attributing his death to natural causes. While the precise circumstances surrounding his passing are still being investigated, his contributions to the realms of adventure and exploration stand as an unparalleled testament to his legacy. Breeshears played a pivotal role in crafting the iconic 1998 IMAX documentary chronicling the ascent of Mount Everest, a project that not only showcased the mountain's majestic grandeur, but also illuminated the inherent risks and challenges encountered by climbers. His exceptional mountaineering prowess and mastery of photography enabled him to capture Everest's essence in a manner unprecedented, earning him widespread acclaim as one of the most gifted adventure filmmakers of his era. A seasoned mountaineer, Breesheers conquered Everest five times, notably in 1996 when he ascended with an IMAX camera showcasing his unwavering dedication to his craft and his resolve to share the Everest experience with global audiences. Beyond his cinematic achievements, Breesheers was deeply committed to environmental causes, founding Glacier Works in 2007, a non-profit organization dedicated to documenting the impact of climate change on Himalayan glaciers. Through Glacier Works, Breesheers amalgamated art, science, and adventure to raise awareness about the profound alterations occurring in the region, offering a distinctive perspective on the urgent imperative of environmental stewardship. His pioneering spirit extended to broadcasting, as he achieved the remarkable feat of transmitting the first live television pictures from Everest's summit in 1983. Brias Heer's fervor for mountaineering propelled him to become the first U.S. citizen to summit Everest twice by 1985. During the tragic blizzard of May 10, 1996, which claimed the lives of eight climbers, Brees Heer's and his team exhibited extraordinary selflessness by halting their filming to aid those ensnared in the tempest. David Bracehear's life and work serve as an enduring source of inspiration to adventurers, filmmakers, and environmentalists alike. His unwavering commitment to exploring and conserving the natural world, coupled with his remarkable achievements in filmmaking and mountaineering, ensure that his influence will reverberate for generations to come. Grant Page, the iconic Australian stunt performer celebrated for his daring exploits in unforgettable films such as Mad Max, The Man from Hong Kong, and Mad Dog Morgan, 
has passed away at the age of 85. Tragically, his life came to an end in a car accident near his residence in Kendall, New South Wales, a sorrowful confirmation delivered by his son, Leroy Page, to the Daily Mail Australia. Throughout his illustrious career, Grant consistently pushed the boundaries of stunt work, fearlessly risking his life to craft some of cinema's most electrifying moments. His prolific partnership with director Brian Trenchard Smith yielded over a dozen projects, yielding groundbreaking films and documentaries that showcased Grant's unparalleled talent and courage. In The Man from Hong Kong, Grant's dynamic fight sequences opposite martial arts luminary Jimmy Wang Yu, utilizing an array of perilous props, highlighted his versatility and willingness to tackle the most perilous stunts head-on. His impact transcended the confines of Australian cinema, leaving an indelible mark on global audiences, notably through his breathtaking stunt in George Miller's seminal Mad Max 1979, where he expertly smashed a car through a caravan, a sequence etched into the collective memory of moviegoers worldwide. Grant's unwavering dedication to his craft shone through in every performance, even in the face of pre-existing injuries like a broken leg, a testament to his extraordinary resilience and unyielding commitment. Prior to his illustrious stunt career, he pursued academic endeavors at the University of Adelaide and underwent rigorous training with Australia's Special Forces Unit, honing vital skills such as repelling and parachuting that would later prove invaluable in his cinematic endeavors. His adventurous spirit and quintessentially Australian give-it-a-go. Attitude resonated deeply, earning admiration and accolades from peers and fans alike. Director Trenchard Smith's heartfelt tribute blog post eloquently captures the essence of Grant's legacy, a legacy defined by courage, innovation, and a pioneering spirit that forever transformed the stunt industry. Survived by his sons Gulliver, Leroy, Adrian, and Jeremy, Grant Page leaves behind a legacy that continues to inspire generations of stunt performers and filmmakers worldwide. Through documentaries and his memoir, Man on Fire, A Stunt of a Life, Grant's legendary status will endure as an enduring testament to his immeasurable contributions to the art of cinema. Steve Lawrence the enchanting Grammy and Emmy-winning artist, whose illustrious career illuminated stages from intimate nightclubs to grand concert halls, has bid us farewell at the age of 88. His final curtain call in Los Angeles, due to complications from Alzheimer's disease, was announced by his publicist, Susan Dubow. Yet in his departure, he leaves behind a tapestry of memories intricately woven with that of his beloved late wife, Adie Gourmet with whom he shared a stage for over 55 remarkable years. Ascending to stardom following a triumphant debut on Arthur Godfrey's talent showcase and a subsequent signing with King Records, Steve made a conscious decision to embrace the timeless melodies of iconic composers amidst the rising tide of rock and roll. His musical legacy, spanning decades of solo albums, found its zenith in 1963 with the chart-topping anthem, Go Away Little Girl, a masterpiece penned by the legendary duo Jerry Goffin and Carole King. Through his soulful interpretations, Steve breathed life into the tales woven by these songwriting titans, endearing himself to audiences worldwide. Beyond the realm of music, Steve etched his mark on Broadway and television, leaving an indelible impression with memorable performances in productions like The Blues Brothers and acclaimed series such as The Carol Burnett Show and The Nanny. Alongside A.D. Gourmet, they formed an unbeatable duo, captivating audiences as a staple act in Las Vegas, earning the esteemed title of Musical Variety Act of the Year at the Las Vegas Entertainment Awards four times over. Born Sidney Leibowitz in the bustling streets of Brooklyn in 1935, Steve's passion for music was ignited at an early age, fueled by the timeless croon of Frank Sinatra. His illustrious career brought him into the orbit of music and entertainment luminaries, 
where he stood shoulder to shoulder with Sinatra himself, even gracing the stage during the iconic Diamond Jubilee World Tour. Steve Lawrence's journey was not merely about individual accolades, but also a celebration of enduring partnership and love. Together with A.D. Gourmet, they became an integral part of the fabric of American music and entertainment, enchanting audiences with their performances and their profound affection for each other. As the final notes of Steve Lawrence's symphony fade away, his music and the memories he created alongside A.D. Gourmet will continue to reverberate in the hearts of fans worldwide. Survived by his son David, a gifted composer in his own right, Steve's legacy transcends mere notes on a staff, embodying the essence of love, passion, and an unwavering commitment to his craft. As we wrap up this journey of remembering the remarkable lives of those we've recently lost, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to you for joining us. If their stories have resonated with you and earned your admiration, we invite you to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. Your encouragement fuels our passion for producing this program. Thank you sincerely for your continued support.